I'm John White. Today we're going to be talking about the checklist for the month of May and with me is Larry Dixon. Larry is a master gardener here in Doniana County and Larry, Good morning, thanks John. for being on the show. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. Well, we have several things to talk about and one is weeds. Oh yes. And, uh, with the summer and the warm weather we've got a lot of our warm season weeds coming on and uh, we'd like to get weeds before they get up to seed so uh, we have a couple choices. Um, this is a broadleaf weed killer. Uh, works on the weeds that uh, have a broader leaf. They're the dicots. And uh, you do want to get the weed identified before you try and uh, implement any kind of control measure. Because if you don't know what the weed is, you're just making a wild guess. And you may end up guessing wrong. So, uh, But our materials here that have 2,4-D in them, the broadleaf weed killers, you want to be careful when the temperatures are starting to get up above 85 degrees for the day. Uh, a lot of these materials will volatilize, they'll turn to a, kind of a gas, and they'll move around the yard and actually damage some of our desirable trees and shrubs. Uh, so we want to be real careful with these materials and put them on with a pump-up type sprayer and just lightly wet the leaves and, and uh, that'll help take care of it. Now for some of our grassy weeds, we have uh, the MSMA and crabgrass is a very um, common summer weed problem and if you don't do anything pretty soon that crabgrass takes the garden over or takes the yard over and uh, the MSA, MSMA material is good for crabgrass so if you can catch that crabgrass when it first starts germinating coming up you can get it knocked out. Uh, it's good for uh, Bermuda grass. Uh, get a little bit of uh, yellowing, I mean as far as having a Bermuda grass yard and trying to get crabgrass out of it, uh, this material is, is uh, good and may leave a little bit of discoloration but the first mowing takes it off of the Bermuda but it'll do a good job on the crabgrass. Will that one kill grass burrs? It'll kill grass burrs, also sand burr, right. Great. It's a good product. Now these type of uh, materials that are total vegetation killers we do not want to use in a home yard situation. They may sound ideal to use in like rocks, gravel yards, that kind of thing, but this material does get into root zones of trees and shrubs. So um, a root from a tree can go several hundred feet from the tree and that material can be leached down into an area. Another thing we see a lot of is insects during the, the warmer summer months. Our aphid populations will be dropping down a little bit but we're going to see a whole host of new insects coming in. And this is a product that we talked about that is the neem. Uh, it's an organic material that works for a pretty broad spectrum of insects as far as uh, working as a growth regulator. So it's a little bit slower acting, but it is a, a good product to use. We have a Safer's insecticidal soap, which is uh, used a lot by homeowners, again, uh, kind of an organic material that uh, will help to keep down some of the insect uh, population, so another one that we can use. And then this one is one that we call BT, or Bacillus thuringiensis, also sold under the trade name of Thuricide or Dipel. And this is good for caterpillars, and uh, so if you're going to have a, a butterfly garden, Larry, you don't want to use this in it. Okay. that'll take care of your butterflies. Okay. But if you do have some, uh, say, cabbage loopers or, or cabbage worms, um, this will do a good job on getting rid of that, or tomato hornworms, uh, webworm. It's all good for those kind, but not good for aphids or mites. What about, like, the coddling moth on apples or something like that? That would work for that. That'd be good for that. Great. Um, speaking about uh, insects that are in different things, we... Uh, do have a lot of problems with Afghan pines with pine tip moth and orthene and the Saigon material are good materials to use to try and control that uh, that particular insect. You do want to get on a regular spray schedule so that you take care of that and uh, uh, but those are a couple of materials you can use for that. We do want to use some type of hose on sprayer when we're using insecticides but on the herbicides we do not want to use a, a uh, hose on sprayer because we're putting out too much liquid. So we want to be careful with that. This is also a time for grass. 
Um, there's a lot of good deals on sod. If they watch the local papers, the nurseries are always having sod sales. And for Bermuda grass sod, this is the time of year for the, you know, the sales to start. So you should start to see um, a lot of sales on sod. And sod is, or seeding Bermuda at this time uh, can be done. Uh, I've got three real good hot weather plants here. Uh, for those people in the southern part of the state, uh, this is sandpaper verbena. It has a real pretty flower on it. This one does spread by rhizomes. You feel the leaf on it. It has uh, almost like a sandpaper-like leaf on it. So very, very colorful. This one's New Gold Lantana. It's a uh, practically seedless lantana. Forms a nice mound, probably a couple, maybe a couple feet high, 18 inches to two feet and probably about three to four feet wide. And then we have the trailing purple lantana. And both of these lantanas just love the heat. So the hotter it gets, the better they grow and the better they bloom. Are so they perennial? They'll die down during the winter, but they'll they'll come back up. Okay. Larry, that's kind of got it. That's, again, there's a lot of things we can be doing this month, but this kind of gives some people some ideas what they can be doing. It'll keep them busy. You can see that. I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Thank you.